Alright, buenos dias, mis amigos. Good morning. Alright, today I'm going to show a portion of this clip. And I'm going to prove that this gentleman is in error. And I'm going to show you that it's easy to prove the error. And it's amazing to me how many people are in, in error when they teach things regarding end time prophecy. It's incredible. It's not just end time prophecy. You see a lot of people preaching the gospel incorrectly. It's like every single thing that's in the Bible, there's somebody there to teach it falsely. It's amazing. But I want to focus on what this gentleman is teaching falsely here. So I'm going to play a clip and have you hear him talk about it first. And let's see if you can spot the air. Tribulation, judgment, kingdom. That's the order of events. Turn to Daniel chapter 12, a few pages ahead in your Bible. Daniel chapter 12 is the final chapter in Daniel. Are we going to see a similar pattern? Daniel chapter 12. Daniel 12, verse 1. Now at that time, Michael, the great prince who stands guard over the sons of your people, will stand. And there will be a time of distress such as never happened since there was a nation until that time. And at that time, your people, everyone who is found written in the book, will be rescued. This is speaking, it's very specific, a time of distress such as never happened since there was a nation until that time. This can only be speaking of one event as it's the worst time in the history of the Jews. By the way, this is proof that Israel's distress spoken of here was not A.D. 70, the destruction of Jerusalem as we talked about last time. It can't be this because was there an event in the history of the Jews worse than A.D. 70? Yes, the 1940s, the Holocaust. One third of all the Jews on earth wiped out. So we, we can't have A.D. 70 be in that time. Thus, this is only one option, tribulation. Daniel 12, verse 2. And all right. <laughs> and then, he, then he's going to quote verse 2. And verse 2. As many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Okay, it's amazing to me that one person but not it's not one person it's so many people cannot see what is plainly in front of their eyes first of all 70 AD no biblical relevance whatsoever right? so you've got that part right now let's examine verse 1 a little more closely all right and at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which stands for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. Alright, so let's do it this way. Alright, let's do it this way. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how somebody's so ignorant. I really don't. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 2. Consider this. Ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation. Now, is he talking about people over in the Middle East that full-on reject the Lord Jesus Christ? Is that who the holy nation of God is? There's something wrong with your heart if that's what you believe. There, I'm telling you that something ain't right. Something ain't right. That's all I can say, man. I, I, I don't know how anybody can 
truly believe that. That people that reject the Lord Jesus Christ are the holy people of God, the royal priesthood. Now, it's insanity. It really is. Now, let's go to Exodus 19 and understand what this is speaking of here, um, starting in verse 5. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. All right, and then of course again in First Peter chapter two, ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people. Notice the similarity. Chosen generation royal priesthood holy nation peculiar treasure peculiar people and this is talking about the children of Israel which the promise of eternal life is to Abraham and his seed therefore we are the children of Israel make no mistake about that all right now the promises to Abraham and his seed he saith not seeds as of many but as of one and to thy seed which is Christ now you can go even back to Genesis chapter 3 and know that the seed is Christ or that Christ is that seed all right and if you be Christ then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise if you read John chapter 8 you see a, a clear distinction given by Jesus between those who claim to be Abraham's seed and who, those who really are Abraham's seed. Those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are the children of Israel. We are Abraham's seed. If you can't see it, there's something wrong with your heart. All right, so such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And that also parallels what we read in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. Let's just make this uh, easy. Matthew 24. There shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall B. You see the parallel? If you can't connect the dot there, you, you the dots, you, you can't. There's got to be something wrong with your heart. Seriously. It's so plain and so obvious, so simple. It's amazing. There shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. Okay. Now, again again who's that nation consider what Jesus says the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof so what happens there's a country a group of people with borders within is the kingdom of God the Spirit of God watches over that nation that country here comes Jesus and he tears down that wall and now the kingdom of God is available to whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ it's pretty simple isn't it I mean that's pretty obvious it's pretty simple 
Therefore, now there is no country with walls and only the Spirit of God watches over that country. The kingdom of God is available to whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, the nation of God are those of us that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. I mean, it's pretty. It's pretty obvious. It really is. Such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. So, again, First Peter chapter two. Ye are a holy nation. You are an holy nation. We that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are the holy nation of God. You can't get around it. Just like I just pointed to you. The kingdom of God should be taken from you and given to a nation. Given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. That's the those of us that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Those of us that are born of God. It would be insane to believe that people that are born of the Spirit of God are not the nation of God. It's insanity. It's downright ignorance, and there's got to be something wrong with your heart, if that's what you believe. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. What, what does that mean? What, what could that mean? It can only mean one thing. Let's see if I can find a similar kind of verse. I don't know. I don't know if I can or not. I don't know. Oh, I don't. I'd have to find something. Let me see here. Well, let me just make the point that Moses led his people out of Egypt. He delivered the people out of Egypt. So also does Christ deliver us out of this world when he comes in the clouds of heaven. Am I not using the right word for that? Think about it. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. We're going to be delivered. We're going to be taken out of this wicked world. And we are going to be brought into a much better world. A world with no death, no sin, no sorrow, no crying, no more pain. A world of everlasting life. All right, so th this is very clearly speaking of the end of the world. You think about this here. Now Jesus is asked, What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? What happens at the end of the world? Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and the he sends his angels to gather together the elect to deliver us out of this wicked world. <laughs> Verse 2 And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall wake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. There's something wrong with your heart. If you're not able to understand this, it's very simple. It becomes confusing when you try to justify what this guy says and what false teachers say with what the scripture actually says. 
That's where the confusion is. If you just take the scripture and believe it, there is no confusion. It's absolutely simple. If you believe this comes directly from God, there should be zero confusion. Very simple. And it's it's not just this. It's This is the same thing that we're being taught over and over and over and over and over again, again and again and again and again, all throughout the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation. I mean... <laughs> I'll show you real quickly. Here, Genesis 3. The Lord says to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Talking about the end of the world. This world is going to come to an end. This world of good and evil. Alright? It's going to come to an end. And God is going to destroy all evil, all sin, all death. It's going to be done away with. This is prophesied all throughout the Bible. Okay? <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. And it's right there. It's right there. How in the world? <coughs> Excuse me. I apologize for that. How in the world do you read this and say, oh, this here is talking about a group of people that full on rejects the Lord Jesus Christ? You got to be insane. You got to be out of your cotton picking mind. Knowing this first. <laughs> Knowing this first, well, yeah, I don't know, what do I know? Maybe, maybe I don't know it second. No, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. So, <laughs> you have to imagine that this is a private interpretation. You have to have knowledge of man's history in order to know what that verse means it, it's just so it's so stupid it's so stupid but that's what a lot of people are teaching the, the time of trouble yeah you, you have to have cable TV to know what God says I mean really that's what it comes down to if you didn't have access to cable TV or the internet there's no way in the world I yeah, honestly I, I don't know how you could believe how you could be a, a believer and look at that verse and say oh that's talking about it a group of people that full on rejects the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's so insane. It's so insane. So insane. So anyways, uh, clearly, clearly, that's an error. And then of course we can go, uh, we can go to Lamb's book of uh, written. The, the, I'm sorry, the, the, the Lamb's book yeah, let's do it this way. Alright. Let's do, uh, let's go here. And there shall no wise enter into it anything that defiles neither whatsoever works abomination or makes a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. That is the book of everlasting life. Alright, you think of your life as a book. And you're writing it, and once you die, that book, the end. Right? That's not eternal life. Only the only book out of everybody that's ever lived 
that has everlasting life is the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we that believe in him, those of us that are born of God, our name is then written in the Lamb's book of life. And therefore we have eternal life because he, his book, endures forever. <laughs> All right. If you look at it that way, it's pretty simple. Right? Everyone that shall be found written in the book. And this is clearly, this is at the end of the world. These prophecies that, these dreams and visions that, that Daniel's given, is they're, <clears throat> they're all in regard to the end of the world. And there's no way in H.E. double hockey sticks you can make the argument that the world came to an end in 1948. It doesn't hold up. Many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, and some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. That didn't. That did not happen. It didn't happen in 70 A.D. It didn't happen in 1948. It can only happens at the end of the world. That's the only time. All right. Okay. Uh, these people. I mean, you got to be. There's something wrong with these guys' heart. And of course, a uh, big, you know, big part of the problem, in my opinion, is that they don't allow people to challenge them. So that's dangerous. That's dangerous when you don't allow people to challenge what you believe. Okay. Two things here. One, as iron sharpens iron, so does one man sharpen another's countenance, or something, or like that. So a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. Iron sharpeneth iron. So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. And then let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. Keep his commandments. This is the whole duty of man. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. You're not hearing the whole matter when you're making these wildly ridiculous claims about 70 AD or about 1948. It's terrible that anybody ever gets killed, whether it's 1940, 1948, whether it's 2024, death. Is a terrible thing. Right? It is, but it's appointed unto man once the two die, and after this the judgment. Now, the problem here is you're claiming that these people, that Dan Rather and those guys, they report. I wasn't there, so I don't know. But they report that, hey, there were all these guys, all these so-called Jews were thrown in ovens and, or whatever. That's terrible. Okay? You think about William Tyndale and how the Catholics, the Jesuit Catholics, they killed him they hung him and then after they hung him they burned his body well that's horrible you think about what Jesus went through that's horrible they nailed his hands and his feet to the cross and then when he was dying of thirst they dipped a sponge in vinegar do you know what vinegar is? That's horrible. You're dying of thirst and somebody sticks a sponge, 
soaked in vinegar in your mouth? That's horrible. So, is that less horrible? Than whatever might have happened in 1948? If people dying today, is that less horrible than what happened in 1948? Or is it all horrible? It's all horrible, in my opinion. It's all horrible. But these people that subscribe to Judaism, they reject the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? So, so because of what they say this happened, they created a nation called Israel. Keep in mind, those people today that subscribe to Judaism they reject the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's not pretend like they don't. They do. If they reject the Lord Jesus Christ, then obviously they reject you. And keep in mind, let's see it this way. Yeah, just keep in mind. I mean, let's be honest about it. First Thessalonians 2. Who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us and they please not God and are contrary to all men. But you want to claim that these guys... are the holy people of God there's something wrong with your heart okay all right okay and it's incredible how simple Daniel chapter 12 is you know Daniel only has 12 chapters it takes an hour to read it it's not rocket science really what we learn in Daniel is taught all throughout the Bible. There's nothing in Daniel that is separate from the rest of the Bible. It's all supported. If you condense the whole Bible down, it'd be, it'd be very simple. It'd be very, very simple. But, <laughs> we're told the whole story. We're told the whole matter. And... Therefore, we get the pleasure of having um, more than enough information to help us learn and to grow and to become wiser, greater understanding, sharper. But if you did condense it down, it'd be just really simple. It'd be... It really is. Once you read the entire Bible and you believe that the words are from God it becomes more simple easier every single day it's not rocket science it's not a confusing book it's very logical very logical it's all true it's all from God Understood properly, there is no confusion in it whatsoever. Alright, and so then the other thing I wanted to uh, bring up, right before he goes into Daniel chapter 12, he talks about Isaiah 24 and 25. Alright, so, yeah, and it's, to me it's interesting. Um, because we get, again, the same... We, there's so many parallels, it's incredible. Um, I want to do it this way. I did want to go over these comments here. Let me do that. Let me just step aside here for one second. 
Mike Hanley, 65, in the original, I'm sorry, is the original meaning of the word world actually age? All right, so the, my answer to that is, does the word dog mean dog, or does it mean cat, buffalo, or spinach? Hey, you take, you know, take any word and say, oh, it doesn't mean what it says. It means something else. I mean, there's something suspicious about that. All right. All right. I mean, there, to me, why are you trying to change the word? It's the same thing that we read about in Genesis chapter 3. Same thing. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made, and he said unto the woman, Yeah, has God said world? Or did he really mean age? Yeah, has God said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Question mark? Yeah. Do you really believe what God says? Getting Eve to doubt the Word of God. Now, isn't that the same thing you're doing, Mike Hanley? Yeah, has God said world? Or did he actually mean age? It's very deceptive. Very subtle. Very deceptive. Very dishonest. Really, at the end of the day, the only person you're fooling is yourself. Why would you even attempt to ask that question? There's something wrong with your heart, man. Something wrong with your heart. You're trying to persuade somebody away from the Word of God. The, his original meaning of the word world actually age. I mean, if you don't know what the word world actually means, you probably don't speak English, right? Or you're just a liar. When Jesus Christ ascended into the clouds, who were the two angels who suddenly appeared? What? Is not the war in heaven? Who were the two angels who suddenly appeared? Um, right. yeah, wait, wait, hold on a second. Is not the war in heaven for the mind of the soul? Right, so maybe I'm overthinking this here. What does it... Who were the two angels? Who were the two angels? Who were the two angels? to that question. Let's see if I can figure out what he's talking about. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Uh, 
right? Is that what he's talking about? Who were the two angels who suddenly appeared? Is that what he's talking about? So, I can't find the angel. If this is what he's talking about, if this is what he's talking about, then. sakes here what 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 it here is making you think it and look you have to imagine well, there must have been angels. Because it does not say it was two angels, does it? Does not say. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner, as ye have seen him go into heaven. And they returned, they, unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day journey. Alright. <laughs> yeah, you know maybe maybe but you can't it says man and so your question who were the two what do you call them angels or call them men who suddenly and this has to be what he's talking about isn't it if not please correct me and I'll, I'll, I'll address it correct me if I'm wrong, or mistaken, or whatever. If the, if there's something else, another part of the Bible. Yeah, no. Yeah, I don't. There's. Is it Luke 24? Let's look at Luke 24. Let's look at Luke 24. Alright, because I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want you to be in error, buddy. I don't want you to be in error here. Now I don't want to be an heir. I don't want. I don't want to be an heir. I don't want you to be an heir. Now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came into the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed, with thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words, and returned from the sepulchre, and told all these things unto the leaven, and to all the rest. Now, 
were these two men angels? Okay. All right. Maybe. But it doesn't say, does it? It does not say. That's the issue that I have. What's wrong with saying who, or asking, who were the two men? What's wrong with, what's wrong with that question? <clears throat> because that's technically what it says. Pardon me. All right. So, does it say? If it doesn't say, then I can't answer that question. Neither can you. And what? Is, what? What does it matter? Unless you want to make some sort of bizarro argument that I'm going to knock down very harshly. Okay. I won't we'll get into it, but is not the war in heaven for the mind of the soul? What? The war in heaven for the mind of the soul? guessing he's talking about Revelation 12 I wish he I wish he I wish he was more specific okay so let's go walk through this and there appeared a great wonder in heaven a woman clothed with the Sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars and she being with child cried travailing in birth and pain to be delivered and there appeared another wonder in heaven and behold a great red dragon having sent seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born now you know what this is talking about right and she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. you That's pretty simple, right? You understand what this is talking about. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared of God, and that they should feed her there. 1,203 score days. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the dragon, the great dragon, was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and to of the sea for the devils come down unto you having great wrath because he knows that he has but a short time and when the dragon saw that he was cast onto the earth he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child and to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time and a times and a half a time from the face of the serpent and the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened up her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keeps the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. 
All right, so your question of is not the war in heaven for the mind of the soul? <laughs> the mind of the soul? Yeah. I don't know. It's such a bizarre question. Uh, for the soul? Okay. All right. For the soul. Maybe. Mind of the soul? I don't know what that means, really. For the mind of the soul. So, the war, obviously, <clears throat> I mean, there's, there's a war in heaven. Right? A war in heaven. A war on drugs. Romans chapter 7, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. So there's a war in heaven, there's a war in my members. There's a war inside, there's a war outside. Total war everywhere. All right. All right, so there's only, um, at the end of the race, there's only saved and unsaved. So if you look at uh, war as a race, or look at the war as a game, who wins, who loses? Well, the outcome has already been determined. Right? But there's still a battle for one side and another side. All right, there's the flesh, which is going to lose the war. And then there's a the spirit, which has already won the war. All right, so whether in heaven or whether in your members, that war, or whether inside, whether your members, that war will continue to be fought until the end of the world. Is it for the mind of the soul? I, I don't, I'm not even sure how, um, you know, I'm not even sure really what that mind of the soul. There's the soul. Alright, so, I'm not sure how to answer that. Spirit, soul, let's see if I... Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing even to the asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and tents of the heart. mind of the soul. Is that different than my own mind? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But he is in one mind and who can turn him and what his soul desires even that he doeth. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Mind of the soul? Mind of the heart, the soul of the heart, the soul of the mind. <laughs> Man, I just don't know. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. Alright. So is the war in heaven for the mind of the soul? Well, if it's for the mind of the soul, then it's for the soul. Right? Um, 
Yeah, okay, so the thing that I would caution you about is uh, understand that this is not a war between two gods. Um, this is a war of salvation and eternal life. Christ, male, is a belief system. Church, female, is the believer. Wrong. I mean, that's... A, it's like you got it completely backwards right there maybe you misspoke okay maybe I should leave that alone because right. right, like just like what we read in in Revelation 12 the woman right, is this um, the woman <laughs> Goes, it's the spiritual aspect of the, the belief system, I guess. So, when we read about the woman, the, for example, Genesis chapter 3. Okay, Genesis chapter 3. When the Lord said to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman. I will put enmity between thee and the woman. Alright, so... The woman represents the body. All right, you think about uh, Eve comes from the rib of Adam, comes from the body. So the woman is the body, and her seed is Christ. Right? So the woman, you think about here another way well here I don't want to get into this too much Jerusalem being a described as a um, woman or a female right the city of God Jerusalem being female the individual believer be both male and female but we all consist of the body of Christ. But to say the male is the belief system, now nah, I can't. Yeah, you're getting you're getting too far. You're walking a very. You're walking. You're stepping a little bit over the line there. You got half your heel over the line there. When one believes in another, other than Christ, they. When one believes. And another, other than Christ, they marry another belief. Therefore, they are adulterers. <clears throat> okay. All right. All right. When one believes in another other than Christ, they marry another belief. Well, do they marry another belief? Let's see. I don't... Subscribe, I, I can marry. Uh, that's a, that's a, to me, marry is a pretty permanent word. To me, marry is a strong word, and it's too strong for what you're describing. You think about all these teenagers; they they believe that they are monkeys. Are they married to it? I can't say that they're married to it. You want to call them fornicators? Yeah, but you're getting too philosophical right here, partner. Too philosophical. Hey, you don't even know what the Bible says, so why are you dabbling in philosophy? You learn what the Bible says, then maybe you'll dabble. Okay, those that are glorified at the end of the age are in Christ forever. They will rule and reign over the earthy who will still marry and have children. Uh, the, you know, that's not supported by the Bible at all. And that's again, goes back to what I just said. Read the Bible before you start to get into all this nonsensical philosophy and theories that are, that are foreign to the Bible. Uh, those that are glorified at the end. Okay, so if you go to, let's go to, 1 Corinthians 15. Now let's apply that that idea. 
Let's apply that idea. 1 Corinthians 15. This idea that we will be glorified at the end of the age, at the end of the world. Right. Why would you change the end of the world to the end of the age unless you're trying to be purposely deceitful? Huh? All right. For an as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive, but every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, that's where they that are Christ that is coming, and that's the end of the world. When he comes in the clouds of, the he of heaven, it is the end of the world. And so what happens at the end of the world? Just what, like what we read in Genesis 3, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. So it's the end of the world when he comes in the clouds of heaven. And so what happens at the end of the world? What happens? At the end of the world? In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. This is at the end of the world. All right. So at the end of the world, we are changed. We are glorified. We take off this corruptible body and we put on incorruption. We take off this mortal body and we put on an immortal body. We are glorified. Those that are glorified at the end of the age Let's try to confuse people. Right? Those that are glorified at the end of the age are in Christ forever. All right, so right now, those of us that are saved are in Christ forever. Okay, we are. We have Jesus abiding in us. We have the Spirit of God in us right now, and we can never die. Right now, no matter what happens, no matter what we do, no matter what God does, no matter what you do. I'm never going to die. Right now, I have eternal life. And nothing can change that. Nothing, no matter what, can change that. All right. So, when this happens, all right, no, remember what he says. Here, let me do it this way. Those that are glorified at the end of the age are in Christ forever. They will rule and reign over the earthy who will still marry and have children. Okay? So, when Jesus comes and we are changed, put on our glorified body, then death is swallowed up in victory. There is no more death. Right? There is no more death. So you can't have earthy people. You can't have people still marrying and having sex. <coughs> you can't. It's impossible. It's an impossibility. You have to say the Bible is lying. That's the only option. That God is dumb and you are smart and that's the only one that's your only option man Isaiah 29 surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as a potter's clay for shall the work save him that made it he may be not or shall the thing framed save him that framed it he had no understanding God didn't understand the things that are going to happen. And the way things are now. God didn't understand. That when God comes in the clouds of heaven. That we're going to still be having sex. God didn't know that. See. I knew that. But God didn't know that. Right, God. God dumb me smart. God dumb me smart. Don't listen to God. Listen to me. I, I mean really. Just be honest. That's what you think. Just be honest. 
All right, and the world passes away in the lust thereof. Oh, wait a second. Well, John don't know nothing. John don't know nothing. You got to listen to me. Yeah, I mean, come on, man. It, it couldn't be more obvious. It couldn't be right there in your face. It couldn't be any more plain. It could not be any more plain. End of the world. The world passed away. Same, same thing. Or what's he say? End of the age. Okay. End of the age. The world passed away. Same thing. What happens at the end of the age? The world passes away in the lust thereof. So, well, they're not lusting. They're still having sex, but they're not lusting. No. No, that's not going to work. Your only option is to say that John was dumb. You can't trust John. You can't trust the Word of God. And the only person that we can really trust is Mike Hanley, 65. In that kitty cat. Right? It's the only people we can trust. And you know I'm a cat guy. Right? You know I'm a cat guy. Awesome. Right? But I'll tell you right now. I got a glass of milk. I'm not setting it down. And walking out of the room. Why? Because I don't trust that cat. I don't trust that cat. I'll take that glass of milk with me. I'll set it in the fridge if, if I have to use the restroom. Or go outside. Anything. Any sort of distraction. I'll put it in a place where I know that cat can't get to it. Why? Because I don't trust that cat. Love that cat. I don't trust him. Not for a second. All right, so again, yeah, what what is it with this obsession? All right, I, I know what you guys want to believe. Do you want to believe that Jesus is going to come in the clouds of heaven and you're going to be changed into your glorified bodies, in you know, just like you were when you were 18, 16 years old, and you're going to be hornier than a dog, and you're going to have sex with all of these uh, degenerate women? that aren't saved you're gonna rule you're gonna be the boss and you're gonna have not 72 virgins you're gonna have as many virgins as you want just like what Mormonism teaches you're gonna have the whole planet of women all to yourself and you're just gonna be popping out babies left and right you know you're just gonna be going nuts this in your mind is heaven I mean just be honest Right? Very few people are honest about it, but I don't know why more people aren't just just be honest. You think you're gonna you think heaven is all about sex. Just just be honest. At least be honest to yourself. That's what you want that's what you believe. That's what you want. That's what you're putting all your hope and your faith into is a world of sex, sex, sex. Just be honest with it. I mean, look, I get it. If, if your intention is to deceive people, then you want to hide it. You want to hide your true, true intention. Think about what you're saying. Though. I mean, those that are glorified at the end of the age are in Christ forever. They will rule and reign over degenerate women and be having, will be having sex with them. And they'll be producing children. I mean, that's what it's all about, man. Sex. What do you think marriage and having children? What do you think sex is? You're completely delusional if you think that having sex doesn't lead to children. Uh, remember what we read there in First Peter chapter two. Oops. Knowing this first, right? No prophecy of the scriptures of any private interpretation. Knowing this first, what did I say? First Peter chapter two. I'm at Second Peter chapter one. All right. Anyways, regardless, chapter three. Knowing this first. That there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. 
Remember what we read here? First John chapter 2. The world passes away in the lust thereof. But these guys are saying, no, no, the lust isn't going to pass away. We're going to be the lords of lust at the end of the world. The sex is going to go on for all eternity. And I'm going to be the sex master. And isn't that what you're saying? Just be honest. Just be honest about it. That's all I'm saying. All right. Why? Why be ashamed if that's what you believe? In Jude, verse eighteen, who, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time. Again, as we get closer to the end of the world, we're seeing more and more. This is exactly what these guys, these the mocking walking after their own lust. They're mocking the Word of God. They're mocking God. If they're, marking, if they're mocking and scoffing at the Word of God, they are mocking and scoffing God. And they are preaching and teaching falsely these doctrines based solely, purely, wholly on sex. Sex and lust, the same thing. Their desire for sex, their desire for lust, it's all the same thing. They're mocking the word of God. They're mocking God, walking after their own lust. This is exactly what this is talking about. Exactly. Second Peter chapter 3, Jude 18, same thing. Talking about the same thing. It, we're seeing it happen, and I'm showing it to you plainly. That this is exactly what's going on in the world today. It's so interesting to me. You, let's go. I tell you. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, we're crying out day and night. We cry out day and night. We cry out day and night for the Lord to come. Do we not? We're crying, crying out day and night. Let me just read this. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was in a city a judge who feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said with himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she is, she worries me. Okay. Her continual complaining, her continual nagging, she keeps nagging me, I'm just, okay. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge says. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cried day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth? Think about this. When Moses, I'm sorry, when Noah, excuse me, when Noah got onto the boat, how many people were saved? Uh, I estimate there was 25 billion people on the earth, a lot more people on the earth, then than what there is now. That's my contention. Can't prove it. That's just what I think. Of all the people that are on the earth, there were only eight people saved. You think about Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities round about. There wasn't even ten righteous. Not even ten. And the whole place got destroyed by fire. And you think about 
what we read in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. Except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. You see a pattern here? When the end of the world comes, there's not going to be very many people saved. Very few. Very few to the point to where God has to ask the question. When the Son of Man comes, shall he find anybody that has faith? Is there anybody that believes? You know, what is there? Eight million people? Eight billion people? On the earth today? Any of them? Any, any of us have faith? Uh, the question is being asked. The fact that the question is asked is incredible. There's not going to be millions and billions of people. Hey, we're all so happy. We have faith. We knew you were going to come. No. no. The whole world's going to mourn. The whole world's going to mourn. The whole world's going to suffer. And there's only going to be a few of us. Very few. That actually have faith. That actually believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. To believe in the Word of God. That actually believes in God. Very few. Alright, so again... This is all about sex. Now, real quickly, let's go to this gentleman here was talking about Isaiah 24. I'm just going to close on this. We're going to go to Isaiah 24. Oh, maybe I shouldn't even do this. Maybe I should save this for another video. I better do that. I better save this for another video. But uh, real quickly, just real, um, let me do a quick overview here. Um, and it shall come to pass that he who flees from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit and he that comes up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare for the windows from on high are open and the foundations of the earth do shake the earth is utterly broken the earth is clean dissolved the earth is moved exceedingly the earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it and it shall fall and not rise again and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are in high and the kings of the earth upon the earth. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners as are gathered in the pit. And they shall be shut up in the prison and, many, and after many days they shall be visited. Uh, then the moon shall be confounded and the sun ashamed when the Lord of hosts shall reign in the Mount Zion and in Jerusalem and before his ancients gloriously. Now this is parallel to what we read in Matthew 24, Mark, uh, all throughout the Bible. The sun and the moon. And, uh, <laughs> and let, let's go. Oh, never mind. Okay. Yeah, let's do it this way. The sun shall be dark and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. It's the same uh, thing. The same thing. It's the end of the world. And there shall be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves, roaring men's hearts, failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. This is the same thing. It's not a different thing. It's the same thing. We're, again, it's another example. All throughout the Bible, we're being taught the same thing. Thing. There's a coming of the end of the world. And when the end of the world comes, there's not going to be any more sex. Sorry, buddy. You're putting all your dreams, you're sitting and laying down at night and dreaming about sex, sex, sex. Then you wake up and all you think about is sex, 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 the whole day and all night. Sex, sex, sex. Well, it's, gonna, it's coming to an end. 
it's coming to an end, might want to start thinking about something else.